Good hello, welcome to One Year's Skin and welcome back to Nose Bones. Learning how to use bone deformers within Toon Boom Harmony. This is a follow-on from a tutorial from oh, a little while ago now. This character was drawn and built from scratch and now it is time to bring him to life. This is Harmony Essentials, the baseline version, so anyone should be able to follow along just fine. Also, there is no node view, so if you're a Harmony Premium user, just keep that in mind, yeah? Now, although this is indeed a software tutorial, there's only so far I can take you with saying which buttons to press and things like that. It's about getting a feel for how movement works. So if you're following along, your results may differ to what I'm getting here. So practice judging for yourself what you think looks good and what doesn't, and what kind of changes are likely to be made in order to correct those things. Let's get started. Fill the whole screen with the timeline and unpack every one of these layer folders. There's a bracket along here that can be used to pull it all the way out so you can see the depth at which these layers will go. We also want to activate animation controls. In the bottom left, there is a button that looks like an angle with a corner in it. Hit that and the parameters column will open, likely showing a whole bunch of ones. Also, if you don't already have it open, make sure you've right clicked along the top timeline to activate advanced animation, deformation, and on the timeline, activate the timeline view. On the toolbar, make sure that animation mode is turned on and the free transform tool is selected. Remember the free transform tool is the make animation happen tool. Using it, lasso select the entire character and in the deformation controls, click this one here, the one with the green circle line X. This is a show selected bones button. And seeing we've selected the entire character, it will show the entire hierarchy. Last thing we need to do is prep the exposure. At the moment, the character is set to only be revealed for 10 frames before vanishing. And the animation concludes at frame 60. So you can just grab this red bracket and pull it all the way out or go to scene, scene length, and change the number of frames up to something more like a uh, thousand. And at the end of the animation, select all the layers, right click and choose extend exposure. All the layers will come out to the end. Okay, so now we're ready to start. First thing to remember is before doing any animation, select the frame that you want to animate and press the plus KF button, add keyframe. A little box appears on the desired frame. First lesson is understanding the behavior of adding a keyframe on an open or a collapsed folder. This is why all of the layers are currently open and visible. Adding a keyframe to an open folder applies it to just that one. Applying a keyframe to a collapsed folder will add the keyframe to that layer and everything it contains. Advantages to both of these and simply being aware of it will save you a lot of time and headaches. Furthermore, if you were to just grab and start moving parts, keyframes will be added respectively, but strange things can happen if you're not aware of it. By simply adding the keyframe to the desired layer first, you can be above board with everything and avoid a large amount of unwanted surprises. First one to create is to add a keyframe to the collapse folder of frame one. This will create a backup for us. Whenever I want the character return to this position, it now means I have it saved. I can copy and paste this keyframe on the collapse folder at any time, and I can always get back to that pose. For this first introductory movement, we're going to be working from the outside in, yeah? Starting with the larger body parts and working our way down to the more subtle ones. So say for example, I wanna animate this sort of bounce up arms in the air. A lot of this is told in the weight of, you know, the body language, not just the arms moving about. So by working from the outside in, I'm gonna start with the torso. I'm gonna put another collapse master key on frame 10, indicating where I want the movement to start. From there, I'll be going to the torso bone. These boxes down the left-hand side allow you to color code certain layers. Because this is quite a major one, I'll just give it a bit of a green tint so it stands out. And on the torso bone, I'm going to add four keyframes. Their positioning for the time being doesn't really matter. The first one will be the starting position where it is now. On the second one, pull it down and to the right a tad. The third, pull it up and to the right quite dramatically. And the fourth one, up and to the right, but not as much. And once that foundation is laid, you can go back and refine the movement. Bounce down up and I want him to come to a rest more to the right of that. 
So just keep fiddling with it until the direction of the movement is something that you're happy with. It can take a little bit, but making changes is very quick and easy to do. When you're happy with the positioning, you can now adjust the timing. There's two ways to do this. You can choose a frame by selecting it and then picking up and dragging it, or you can assign add and remove exposure to a keyboard shortcut. I have it set to E and R. This allows me to push and pull frames along the timeline however I wish. So typically you would want to experiment with how long each of these three movements will go. Down, up, down. Play it through and you may notice that it's still a bit strange looking. Think to yourself, what can you do to just help it make look less strange and more interesting? Well, we may want to hold at the lowest position for a bit longer rather than it being so, so sudden. A fun way to do this is to create a new keyframe somewhere along the movement. This saves that position and we can exploit that. So stretching it out a few frames means that the distance between what was only one frame is now three. In fact, I'll do the same thing at the peak of the arc. The most dramatic uppy part could be even faster. Bring that from two in-betweens to one. Next, we can introduce a bit of rotation. So find the frame with the uppermost point of movement and on that root bone, pull it back just a bit. So we have a bit of rotation. On the lowest dip part of the movement, give it just a little bit of a tilt down as well. This will create a rather strange looking flick. We want the rotation to carry through the whole rise up, not just this tiny subtle part at the end. Well, we can actually control each of the parameters independently. On each layer, there is a plus button on the right hand side. Crack this open and you'll see the individual parameters, position, orientation, radius, bias, and length. Orientation is the rotation of a bone. The number only changes during the sections which we have told to move. So we can increase the length that the rotation plays for without affecting the position by removing its keyframes from within the parameter section. So now the orientation animation will not be affected by these extra frames that we added in the middle. There we go. That's starting to look a lot better. We still don't have any easing yet, but we don't want to add that until the end. Applying eases this early on is only going to create more troubleshooting and detailed tweakingness, which we don't want to have to deal with yet. So now that we've learned that for the first bone, let's start to work our way in by animating the rest of the spine. So now with the starting frames added in, we have to be a bit more careful and aware of our surroundings now because we've not predetermined where the keyframes are going to go. Remember, we have the original keyframes here to rely upon to copy and paste back in if something starts behaving a bit too strange. On the first keyframe of movement, tilt down each of the bones just a bit. At its highest most point, I want them to be quite dramatically straightened up. Notice the keyframe information being generated automatically across each of the bones. And at its final resting point, I'm going to take the first keyframes, paste them back down, and it sort of bookends the sequence. Now, just like the torso section, that keyframe placement is a rough guide simply to get the position down. Now we can push and tweak those frames to get them looking as nice as possible. The first thing is to delay them. Having everything moving in complete unison with the bottom of the torso is making it a bit too flicky. If I push the downward motion out by two frames, now the spine has somewhat of a delay to it. This benefits the lower motion, but is a hindrance to the top as it creates a strange whip. So pull these ones back in. We can make things look a bit more interesting by delaying the timing between the different elements of the body. The first pull down, for example, if that were to be extended by two frames and the very ending extended by one, that's looking better, but the top section is very whippy. So like what we did originally, I'm going to add a keyframe in just after its uppermost point and pull that out by a frame or two to help keep it at that point for a bit longer. In fact, the body coming back down is always going to feel a bit too whippy. It's just coming down too far. So once again, just after the second to last keyframe, add a new one in and drag it to overlap and therefore override the original final frame. So the top of the body doesn't come down nearly as much and has a bit of a nicer rest. Can you see that it looks a bit jerky? This is because the entire body has come to stop 
but the spine bend continues to move. Let's hide this by pulling the spine animations back by one. So now their movement will overlap by one frame, helping to hide it. There we go, that looks much better. I'm afraid I have to leave it there for this video. However, the conclusion will be up very soon, if not, is already out. Is, is there an annotation there? Uh, maybe. Now that we've learned the fundamentals from doing the back and spine, creating the rest of the body's movement should be a fairly speedy, straightforward process and get decent results. I do hope to see you then, and take care.